Okay, we're back to talk about the telescope, and uh, we're happy to, to see again uh, Sam Wilder King uh, II, uh, and uh, he is the EMUA uh, TMT um, rally co-organizer still today. Yes, Hi, right, Sam. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Jay. How's it going? Good. Well, that's my question to you. How is it going since last week, last Thursday, when... You know, I mean, it was a certain surprise in seeing the hundreds of people show up to support the telescope. That was a great move, and it was a great phenomenon, and it, it had a balancing effect in my mind. Um, so how has it been since then? What have we learned since then? Uh, I think we're learning that people really do support the 30-meter telescope, and there's, you know, it, it was all, I think it was always clear that Hawaii, the state, supported it. I think it's now becoming clearer that there's Native Hawaiians that support it. Mm. I, always, I always have an objection to this kind of race-based you know, dichotomy, but it's, it's the reality of the, of the times, you know, the identity politics and the, you know, the, the, discuss, the Instagram, social media. It's, you know, it's all about passion and that kind of thing. But it's also important. I mean, there's, a, there's an extent to which, you know, there's... There's keepers of that, that host culture idea, and there's, there's something to be said for that, especially since you know, we do have a, a tourism industry that has this kind of idea. You want it to be something that's sacred and important and valuable, and it is something that's sacred and important and valuable. So there's a, it's, there's a certain amount of importance on you know, that, that you know, my community, as a Native Hawaiian community, OHA beneficiaries, they're having an interest there, but that's the important thing that we're learning. We're both, a lot of those people are coming out and saying, you know, this is a good thing. I've been, and that's basically what I've been working on. I've been trying to make phone calls and trying to find all the people that are supporting and, you know, be like, you know, let's, time to come out. This is the time to, to speak up. Let's no more sitting around waiting and, and, and wondering what's going to happen next. Like, what's happening is, are you going to make a choice to come out and stand up for what you believe or are you not? And that's, and, and some people, I understand where they're, they're coming from. They, you know, I've heard reports of people being ostracized or, you know, there's, there's kind of cyberbullying going on. There's, there's, a, there's an ostracization that happens in communities a lot with the TMT, and I think that's very inappropriate. It's not very kapuloha if people that are, you know, anti-TMT are ostracizing members that are pro-TMT, but, but, you know, that's how it goes. And I think that's it's something that you've got to push back on in the state to say, you know, that's, like I said, it's not the story we want to tell in this state. And I think people are starting to realize that, they agree with that sentiment. They don't want the story of the Hawaii to be, you know, where this is us and you're them and we have this claim and it's our claim and only we get to have any say over it because of our race. And so people are pushing in that way. I think it's good. Well, <clears throat> let me unpack some of that with you. Um, sacred. I, I, I must say I, I do have questions about sacred. What is sacred about this mountain? And when did it, when did it become sacred? Well, I, you might be asking the, the wrong guy all the details on that. I, I'm, I'm not a Native Hawaiian practitioner of the ancient Native Hawaiian religion. I think, is, is it a religion? Uh, I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't know. I've been starting to look into, and this is, and this is actually one of the things that I think is, is good about this whole process. Everyone's taking the time to learn something about it and learn about the history. And I'm starting to learn a, bit, a little bit more. I've been trying to post links online about um, all the documents that were created over the 10 years that this thing has been vetted. And there's an extensive environmental impact statement that covers all of this. And there's a, somebody, the, one of the authors of the EIS wrote essentially an entire book on the history of Mauna Kea. And it's very extensive and there's, it's you know, like Appendix F or something, starting at like page 370 of the third volume of the EIS. And it goes on to talk about, you know, there's these chants, these Native Hawaiian chants that are the creation myths. And I think there were three major ones. And there's one that talks about kind of the Wakea and Papa and this kind of creation myths story. Did they mention Mauna Kea in the chants? I think there's a, yeah, there's, I think they, they do. They I mean, do these are historic them. chants. I'm talking about chants written yesterday. No, I'm these are historic about... chants. Yeah, historic chants. Uh, there's, there's definitely, the EIS explains it. There's, there's, a, there's a certain level of sacredness. I mean, you know, it's, there's a balance act, right? On the one hand, there's certainly an argument. I, I don't even know if it's an argument. They're just historically, Mauna Kea was a sacred place. The Ali'i went all, only could go up to the top. But then there's the other side I think we mentioned before, which is the Ali'i converted to Christianity as well. So I, I don't know, you know if they were still the kingdom of Hawaii, they would now be the Christian kingdom of Hawaii. Well, so I, I'm not sure two, what... Two religions, it sounds like. Well, I mean, yeah, the, the, the 19th century was quite remarkable. 
Um, you know, people learn how to speak English, learn how to read and write. They were really good at it early on. By 1830, everything was, was, was pretty, um, you know, settled in that regard. There were lots of schools, lots of churches, lots of religion, Christian religion. I mean, you know, the place changed dramatically in the space of 30, 40 years. By 1850, it was clear where Hawaii was going on every level. And so, um, I, you know, are these, is this a competing religion? A religion that was forgotten and then remembered? You know, if you don't know, I just think, say so. No, I mean, I, I don't know all the details for sure. And that, like I said, I'm learning more. But I think there's definitely evidence from people I've been talking to and the more I've been reading that, you know, it was... It wasn't forgotten necessarily in the sense that nobody remembered it ever. It's just that nobody was practicing it. And it definitely seems like more people have started practicing or going to the mountain and treated it the way that the protesters are treating it in the early 90s as a result of protests against the telescopes in particular. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's not really, that debate isn't really that important for the future to me because the, the question of whether or not your cultural claims are valid or this or that i mean i think there's something to be said there and we should and we should discuss it as a community but you, you get to some point where it's like okay now that we've discussed this we, we need to have the rule of law so how are you gonna what system do, does the protesters mode of operation in, operating imply should exist in the state of hawaii and what it seems to be is well, what we're going to do is we're going to sue you and object, and we're going to use the legal system to stop you from doing the thing we don't like. But then, when suddenly we have lost in every legal battle, in every courtroom, in every contested case hearing, every step of the way, finally, when it gets down to it, we're going to go on social media and we're going to make a claim of sacred culturalness that, you know, it's just, it's just our religion. We've made this religious claim now, and, you know, despite the fact that it's been examined thoroughly in all these hearings, but because those hearings weren't public enough or whatever, or The Rock didn't show up, you know, we are going to have this. We're gonna, now we're going to do it like this, and now you have to listen to us. You must negotiate with us. That doesn't, that's not the basis of, for a system of government, to you know, quote Monty Python. It's just not a good idea <laughs> to have your system of government run where you, know, you can just come out finally and be like, I, I object well, to this. Well, and, you know, I think people, your point is well taken. It reminds me of some politicians who say, you know, if I win the election, um, I accept the election system. They accept the fairness of it. If I lose the election, uh, it, it, it was all, uh, it was not fair. I, uh, I agree. And, I, and I'm, you know, there's something in, inherently unacceptable about that. If you, if you, go, you know, what you describe is two systems, uh, and you use either one uh, to get where you, you need to go. Use them both. And just keep on going and fighting and fighting and fighting. You never give up. That's what I hear out of this. I, that's why I don't agree with the, the mo the protesters are doing. I mean, I think there's, there's a space for the civil disobedience discussion, and I think that's, that's acceptable. I disagree with the analogy that people are making to, like, the civil rights movement. I, it's just, I don't think there's an analogy to be made. The you know, civil rights movement was not examined by... 10 years of contested case hearings and environmental impact statements. It was just racism like, that they were pushing back against. And you know, there, were, there were members of the black community that were like, yeah, this is all great. We, lo we love all these laws that keep us out of restaurants. The native Hawaiians now are saying, this is, you know, our culture has moved on. It's, just, it's completely not analogous. But there are people that disagree. That's fine. But I people think that's, say you know, that, th that this is all kind of a proxy for another, another dissatisfaction underneath. It's the dissatisfaction you hear from native Hawaiians that you know, they, their land was stolen from them in the overthrow. They disagree with the overthrow. They disagree with the jurisdiction of the, of the United States. Um, and they, they're very unhappy about it. And, and every opportunity, um, you know, to, to oppose things, oppose any, you know, progressive direction, um, you know, they will, they, will, uh, they will do that. They will, they will And in fact, you could look back over the past few years, not that long, really, and see a lot of projects have been stopped on the same idea. So query, you know, what is, you know, what, what is really happening here? I, I suggest there's something under the surface, um, and it isn't really the telescope. It's two possibilities I'd like you to comment on. Uh, you know, one is they're very unhappy about the overthrow, and they're still replaying that, um, and, the, and the loss of um, whatever, whatever was in existence in 1893. Um, and the other is, and somebody told me, a Native Hawaiian told me this, I, I'd like you to comment on it. The, the TMT and Mauna Kea 
are very important, but not in the way you think. They're very important as a rally point. They have great value to Native Hawaiian groups as a rally point because it brings them together, it consolidates their movement, if you want to call it that, and it is going to be useful in future, in future projects, in future oppositions, future protests. And so for the first time, you see a rally of this magnitude. And I guess, you know, it sounds to me like that's a true analysis, um, that this has actually had a salutary effect on bringing the Native Hawaiian movement together. What do you think? Well, I disagree that it's bringing the Native Hawaiian community together. I, I'm not sure the Hawaiian, Native Hawaiian community needs a bringing together. That's, that's, a, that's a thing that was, that's been created for political reasons in various ways. I mean, I, what, they're, what they mean is the people that support federal recognition, the people support sovereignty, I guess, and they're, they're all now in agreement that they don't like the, the telescope. But I'm not even sure if that's true. I mean, I'm a member of the Native Hawaiian community. They're not bringing me together. I don't like this protesting at all. I don't like the, you know, objecting to our legal system and violating our process. So that's... I don't know, but I think that's definitely what the protesters think they're doing. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think they've said that. I'm not sure it's even a mystery. I mean, I think you, they, would, they would say it, and I'm not, you know, I, I, I get it as a political strategy. I mean, sure, why not? Like, get your supporters to come out, and I mean, to some extent, I'm, I have, I'm, want rallies like this Thursday. We're going to do another rally at 5 p.m. at the state capitol because I want the supporters of the TMT to come out and meet each other and network and say, like, look, this is... You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be worried. You, the people are out there. The people support you. So I, I understand that. But I get the point you're going towards is, you know, this is not a reason to block this absolutely fantastic process or project that will bring so many benefits to Hawaii. And my objection to it was the same that I had last week when I, you know, I was writing my op-ed or two weeks ago. It's just you're teaching the next generation this story of victimhood and grievance that they're going to use to roll into the next project, whatever their particular thing is. They can't win in court. They can't win in the court of public hearings and going through it. So they're just going to object and say, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Native Hawaiian, therefore you can't do this, or this is an environmental violation. I mean, people have been using the EIS process in Hawaii. And they've been abusing it for a very long time to make everything in Hawaii harder to do. And I think it started with good and intentions. more expensive to do. They've, it started with the intentions of saying, let, you know, we have to preserve the beauty of Hawaii for, for the reason just because it's beautiful and for the tourism industry. But the end result is that my generation can't buy homes. And everyone's wondering, oh, where are the kids going? It's like, well, I can't buy a home because you make every single project to impossible to do. Why would I, I can't buy anything? Because like I, I think I was describing it before, right, where if you're an entrepreneurial housing developer and you want to build some new thing that's cheap, you can do it fast. It's hard for you to get upfront funding because you don't maybe have a lot of history with the financiers, but you need a three hundred thousand dollars to write an EIS. It's like you, you're not going to get that. You're not, you just don't do it. So the big guys are the only ones that come in. They can sit around and wait forever. You're making everything harder to do. You're making everything more expensive. And, and this more is a, expensive. This is happening all over the country. I mean, San Francisco is one of the worst examples of this, and they're having this conversation. This is just another example. I mean, you know, at some level. It, it, it's the telescope is spending a ton of money the, the scientists that are spending a ton of money to get this done and that money goes away from scholarships that could have gone to students to study the science and all these kinds of things and all for the purpose of telling a story a certain way telling this grievance story where everything was bad and there's there's no you know there's we didn't make the choice like the choices were not ours the choices were somebody else's you know there's we deserve this and we deserve that and somebody else did it to me I, and, you know, to some extent, there's an argument there for some places, but it's far too nuanced for this, for this kind of a fight. But, but you know, I want obviously to talk they about want to three to reaction that, so. points that, that uh, I'd like you to comment on. Um, the, the first reaction point is that you got people to come out, and you will again this week. That hasn't happened before. People, people who support the, the telescope and the surveys tell us that, what, 73% of the people in the state support the telescope. Where are they? Um, they're, they're responding to anonymous surveys is where they are. Um, and then uh, there was another one with the Star Advertiser, which was something over 50%. This is a very interesting contradiction. 50% uh, felt that the telescope would, in fact, ultimately get built. Um, not 73, but 53. So assuming you sort of conflate those two together, what you get is that people would like to see it built, but they're not all that confident that it will be built. Different. Um, anyway, so I wanted to get, so what kind of feedback have you gotten from 
the, you know, the astronomical community, the academic community, the science and engineering community, and the business community about, about the, the juxtaposition of the two groups, one on one side of Baratania Street, the other on the other side. What kind of you know, comments have, have you received since last Thursday? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that there's been anybody that's like one group or the other. I mean, there's, there's some business people that have come out that were positive about it. Um, there were Native Hawaiians that have come out, and like I've just said, you know, I've, I got in touch with Lepo Babayan, and he's very in favor of it, and you know, cultural practitioners that are very in favor of it. So I think people have generally just said they were glad that the supporters finally started coming out, and most people felt intimidated, and they didn't want to say anything. And so the general reaction has been like, well, finally, I have a place to go and see the people that care about this thing. That's, I think that's what people, that's what I wanted. That's why I organized the rally. I, or, it was very or interesting announced to the see. Rally. Yeah. I just, I didn't, like I said, to, you know, I think Star Advertiser or something, I didn't know if anybody would show up. I was going to go by myself, maybe with Malia. If Malia was, I talked to Malia, Malia was going to be there. It was going to be me and Malia standing on the road with signs saying, we support the TMP. Well, I suggest you anybody have else, more people this I, week. I hope, I hope It's so. a rolling stone. So. The second tier of people I'd like to ask you about are the, are the, the people who, um, you know, who um, don't want to talk about it. And I, I do my little surveys uh, here in downtown. I ask a lot of people what they think about this issue. And I don't charge my question. I'm, I'm trying to be neutral in the way I frame the question. And a lot of people will not discuss it, will not discuss it at all. And I'm not a threatening person. I try not to be threatening. But you know, they will say, I don't know about that. I don't care about that. I'm not involved in that. There are arguments on both sides. Um, I don't know enough to actually be able to respond to you. Um, and, and you know that they have other feelings about it. Um, but I'm getting a very high percentage of people, you know, sort of doing the wallflower thing. I'm not sure why. Why are they doing the wallflower thing? Why are they afraid to talk about it, you know, in public? I, people are afraid to talk about almost anything. I mean, you know, it's the, the old adage. You don't talk about, like, money and politics and work when you're at your family dinner, right? It's just, people don't want to talk about it. It's, it's, it's dramatic. People in Hawaii don't like, you know, confrontation. They don't want to hear it. They don't Is want to say it. Is this politics? It. I mean, I think it's politics? obviously politics now. I mean, if you're starting to ostracize people from your community because of their political beliefs, that it, it, you know, it's, it's politics because of the way the protesters have framed it as like the Hawaiian kingdom and the, the, the identity politics of saying Native Hawaiians believe this, and if you don't believe it, you're not a real Native Hawaiian. I mean, that's just weird. And so, but people don't want to touch it. They're like, okay, whatever. And that's why I think it's important for people like me and people like Malia and anybody else that believes and supports the project, especially Native Hawaiians that want to tell the Native Hawaiian story from their perspective and say, it's, it's okay for people to support this. I mean, they should come out. There's, there was one funny experience I had as far as the, the race element goes. There was one funny experience. I called a radio show and I was talking to them and I was having this whole discussion about how the polls all support the TMT. And at some point, one of the, radio, the DJs asked me, well, you know, like, you know, the, they were here first, and so they should have a right to say something. And I was like, well, who was here first? And the DJ was like, well, it was, it was the Hawaiians were here first. I was like, well, the, the Hawaiians, first off, are 70%, or, you know, if you want to get technical, it's a plus or minus 10% confident, like, margin of error with a confidence interval of 95%. So 60 to 80% of Native Hawaiians support the project. So I'm not sure what the point of that argument is. And then I was also pointing out something just kind of, you know, flippant because it's the radio. I'm like, well, there's one guy that was quoted in Civil Beat saying he was 100% Okinawan, he's on the mountain supporting this cause, and, and, the, and the DJ cut me, another DJ cut me off, she's like, oh, stop you right there, like, you don't have to be Hawaiian to support the Native Hawaiians. And I was like, oh, oh, well, okay, fine, yeah, I agree, you're right. And so anybody should be able to come out and support the, the TMT, because Native Hawaiians support the TMT, and it's a Native Hawaiian project. It's communing with the heavens in a place that is, you know, a gift to mankind and humanity to study and learn about the heavens, I mean, learn about you know, God's creation. If you're religious, you can, you can tell the story, the way to make it positive and a win-win for absolutely everybody, or you can spin it the other way. But why are they so afraid to talk about it? Are they afraid of recrimination? Are they afraid of, of being criticized? And the people who support the, the TMT, they just don't want to talk about it. I think some it. people don't want their cars to get keyed. I mean, some people are like, they don't want bumper stickers. They don't want their car it's to get fear. banned. I've That's straight fear. seen that on Facebook. Yeah, I think people are afraid. I think there is an intimidation factor that the protesters are putting out there. On social media, for sure, people are constantly doing it. I'm not sure it's, it's so bad now. I feel like people are starting to come out and push back more. And there's, there's a, you know, in, this, in the 
groups that I've been looking at, there's, there's moderators that explicitly come out and say, you know, that comment's not helpful to the conversation. Make sure you push back. And, so, and there's, you know, there's people that can say nasty things on both sides of the debate. So it's, it's important for the supporters, if they start coming out and coming out in large numbers, to also watch their language and watch their words and understand that the protectors, you know, even if they're, there's some that are cultural and they, they're sincere in their beliefs and they say, you know, it's going to hurt. They gotta, you, have to, you can understand that and you can feel it and you can empathize with it. And even if you don't ultimately agree and you understand that that's not a basis for a system of government to just have religious claims that can trump everyone's interests ever. Then there's some people that they don't have any, they don't care about that at all. It's just political. I can still understand where they're coming from. It's democracy. You can do the civil well, disobedience Hawaii, thing. Though. Hawaii is a small town. People are afraid of recrimination. I, I agree. People, they're afraid I, people of their, are afraid. their tires, whatnot, you know? Um, and it's, it's a small town where if you go public about something, uh, it may come back to haunt you. Where they say uh, what comes around goes around, it's a small town. And I think there's a lot of that kind of feeling that limits people there's, to express themselves. There's people trying to boycott a supermarket because the owner of the supermarket on Big Island came out in favor of TMT. Exactly. And so they're trying to boycott. I mean, exactly. Let me I, go people to the should media. go shop there, I guess. Another one of the tiers that we should discuss is the media. Um, before, I guess, and especially after last Thursday's uh, rally, I mean, pro-TMT rally, how has the media been looking at this? I, I recall my own reaction as I saw an advertiser um, editorial that said, yes, we should build a TMT. But then I see page after page, article after article, which essentially was on the other side of the coin. Uh, you know, uh, reporting on all the people who were opposing it. And so the, you know, the, um, and, th and that's the one that, that kind of catches your attention, but all the people who were opposing it. So the editorial really was, was paled in light of all this news about the opposition to the project. I mean, how do you feel the, the media has been doing? How do you feel the media has been handling this? I've written a lot of <clears throat> angry letters to editors during this process and to the news media about their, the way they've covered. I think it's been very disingenuous in a lot of ways. But, and I'll, I, but I will give them, and I, and I don't know what their agenda is. I, I don't, I've never understood the news media. I mean, your job is to cover the news and it just seems like there's always a spin in every story that reporters write. But you know, sometimes it's hard to get your bias out because every word you tweak it, it can come across a different way. But, so so I, I would love to know, please bring Rich Blangiardi or somebody on here and ask them what they're, what their plan is. But I think at some other level, it's, it's news. It's a product. You're selling a product. If you want to earn media, go out and earn the media. The, the protesters showed up and earned media. They made a spectacle. They got celebrities to show up. They've been planning this for years. They've been working hard. They're sleeping there. Whatever they're doing for summer, they are spending it there. So if you want news media, you come out and cover the news media. So I think when the, when the rally happened, we got a lot of positive I mean, we, the pro TM, the TMT got a lot of positive coverage or it, it, it kind of dialed back in a way because now there was something to talk about. If you want to talk about it, then, then get up, get up off the couch, write a letter, say something. Like I said, everything people do counts. So if you see a news story, you don't like it, you write a letter to them and you tell them you don't like it. They respond. There's contact info on the websites. So you just, you just got to take action. You don't even have to get off your couch. You pick up your cell phone. You just Google it. Send them a letter, tell them what you think, they will react, they will respond, they want to know. And for, for the past couple of weeks, it's only been the protesters. I mean, if you've got a camp of people on Mount Achaia, I, hey, I assume they have Wi-Fi up there because of all the pictures. And so if you're just broadcasting that out all the time, you just nothing to do but you know, respond to things. And yeah, people are sharing you where you should there, go yeah, and what right, you should send it to. Right. I mean, I'm sure there's other things to do also. They, they have a, you know, their university learning language. I, I read one post by a pro EMT person, it was like, I actually want to go there and like learn about Hawaiian language and culture from some of the teachers. I, I was like, that's a great idea. You should definitely go. I mean, maybe you just stay subtle about it if you're just there to learn. But I, I think that's, a, that's fine. So the point is, I think the media is doing in this day and age what the media does. I, I would love to see kind of a really neutral analysis, people looking at what the, the conflicting interests are in the groups, kind of what you're trying to do. But at some level also, it's like, look, you got to go earn your media, right? If you want to get attention, go do something that deserves attention. If you're just going to sit and be a wallflower, like you said, okay, no one's going to, no one's going to care what you think. At some level, there's, there's something to be said for passion in, in a democracy. Like, if, if the majority cares, but they don't really care, then the minority is going to win. I mean, it's kind of like a, you know, a free trade debate, when back in that debate was actually happening, now it's all confused. But 
you know, the majority of people win from that kind of a trade scheme because it reduces consumer prices, but then the minority gets hurt. So it's always that, it's always that balance. So you've got you to gotta take action. Well, as we've seen, democracy is changing, certainly changing at, at the national level and in other countries. And I, I think we can see some of that here, too. There's a question about the rule of law, as you mentioned. There's a question of exactly what are we talking about and how do you inform yourself? I, I talked to one woman and I said, uh, I said, what do you think about TMT? And uh, she said, I don't know why they can't do it somewhere else. And uh, I said, have you, have you read the newspapers? Have you informed yourself about this? And she said, this is so interesting. This is a national kind of comic. She said, I don't trust any of the media. <laughs> they're, they're all lying. So how can I make my mind up? I ask questions, but I don't, I don't trust them to provide the answers. That's, that was a very interesting conversation. Um, but let me go to the third tier of discussion. Fourth I tier now, I think. We're at Are we in the fourth tier? That's fine. Groups, Many tiers. This, this is a very sophisticated, That's, nuanced kind of subject, right. as you said. It's a fascinating said. thing. So now we have the government. We have the politicians. And the politicians arrive on the scene. I'm not sure why. Um, and they, they come, but they don't really actually come with a, an agenda that you can understand. Um, and the agenda changes with some of them. Um, and they're on the mountain, and they're in front of the television cameras, and I suppose that's always good uh, for a politician. Um, but what, you know, what, what's the play here as far as the, you know, politicians are concerned? Are they trying to get votes? Are they trying to do the right thing? Is it a combination? Uh, where is it all going? Because you know the, the fact is, if you're in political office, people tend to listen to you. Leadership comes from being in a high office. Everybody knows who you are. So what is happening with them? How... how are they affecting it, and how is it affecting them? And how do, do other people, that is, the, the, um, the people who are not protesting on the mountain right now, how do they see the comments by these politicians? I, Today, this afternoon, uh, David Ige withdrew voluntarily, sua sponte, he withdrew uh, under pressure, he withdrew uh, his emergency uh, declaration. I, I don't know what that means. Maybe you can help me. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. I think. Uh, the breakdown of the rule of law in a defined area at a very important time is, especially when you have people posting on social media that they're willing to die for this particular cause. I think that definitely constitutes an, an emergency situation. And I think it was completely appropriate to declare an emergency, and it's still appropriate. But I think you know maybe at the time that if the construction starts again and there's still an issue, he can probably redeclare it. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic there, and I think he's trying to de-escalate because there's hurricanes coming. I mean, I can give the governor props for that. You know. There's been a lot of pressure on Ige, in particular, starting with him at the top, where they're saying, you know, he, you know, he, why didn't he do this faster and this faster and that? And there's something to be said, like, you know, he got elected. Like, we, we've elected him twice, and it wasn't like he had easy elections, right? He took out a sitting governor. I mean, Lean Hanabusa was a strong candidate. He, he has his finger on the pulse of how the people of Hawaii want to see this conclude. And I think there's something to be said for that. And he doesn't... People well, we don't want to see everyone just get arrested and wiped out. We want to have a conversation and kind of like have res and show respect for each other and see, you know, like how, how can we resolve this? I mean, I think at, at bottom, the rule of law exists. It, it might have to be enforced. And that's if you want to be arrested, they can, they can be right. We can accommodate that. But I think he's trying to gauge that situation. And so I think the emergency declaration withdrawal, I think David Ige, as an engineer, it's kind of his mindset. He's just looking at it like, look, there's a hurricane coming, so let's calm down. Can you guys, like, move out of the way. I don't know if he's going to nefariously, or not even nefariously, I don't know if he would use that as an opportunity to move it. I, I don't, I'm sure that's what the protesters think. Not, I wouldn't even object necessarily because, you know, it's time to move forward with the project. But also, I, I get it, if they want to come back after it, I think he's just trying to say, look, there's a hurricane coming. So just everyone calm down for a second. Like, you can come back. Mm -hmm. it's a, that's what I'm saying. Like, at some level, there's a political, it's a game that we're playing where you're showing how much passion you have for it. And I, I, and I can respect that. Like, that's how you have conversations like this. Like, you're saying people are scared to talk about it, right? Well, people wouldn't even be thinking about it if it wasn't all over the news, much less talking about it. So when you have these kind of situations and conversations in a democracy, you, can, you have the opportunity for you, you, the consciousness and knowledge base of an entire community to elevate. And so that's, that's valuable, and that's something that we should look at as a, as a positive in the situation. And I think David Ige and his staff are just like, we don't want people to die. We don't want anyone to be hurt, so why don't everybody just take a second? We got hurricanes coming. 
just slow down for right now. Everyone, you know, you come back. I know you're going to come back anyway afterwards, but then we can we can go from there. I think that's what he's thinking. Mm. And as for everybody, other other that's, politicians, that's kicking it down the road, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But I'm not. They're not going to build this during this time anyway, right? If the hurricanes are coming. You they're think not going it to would have been appropriate for some political leader to say, just to adopt your position. Okay, this is important to the state. This is science. This is one of the things we have done well. There's no reason that the culture and the science cannot coexist. They have for years and years. Why don't we just go ahead with this project? What is everybody so excited about? Instead, I think a lot of the politicians have fomented the passion instead of trying to actually resolve it. And so what you have is, at best, kicking it down the road. At worst, I mean, th this is not at all over. And let me close with asking you this. You know, the people who feel that the chances of this actually happening are less than uh, the views of the public to want it to happen. Uh, there's, a, there's a discrepancy there. Is, is this going to happen, or are we just going to play around uh, for months or years until we, we break the back of the consortium and, and they say, it may not be as good elsewhere, but we have to go elsewhere. Like Superferry, we have to close this down. I don't know. I'm not on the TMT board. As far as I can tell, there's a risk that it will not happen, which is why I spoke up and which is why I'm taking action, because I think it absolutely should happen. It's a fantastic project. And for all the other reasons we've discussed it, it should definitely happen. So I think if people support the TMT and they want to get it built, this is not the time to sit around and be like, oh, I'm sure they'll take care of it. It is the time to start writing letters. Write to your governor, call your senator, call your state representatives, Call the, you know, call the TMT people, find out who's fine. I think the Moore Foundation is financing them. They've already been targeted. Write them letters of support. Start making phone calls. Start calling people. Get on social media. Every, in this debate, every single thing counts. Write letters to The Rock. Hashtag these celebrities that are coming out in favor of the protesters. Let them know what you think and why you think it's a great project and a good idea. So what's the next step uh, as far as uh, EMUA is concerned? What, what do you see happening? You mentioned there was going to be another protest uh, or another. rather counter protest on friday of this week that's only a couple of three days away well i'm not protesting anything i'm just rallying so rally, I'm rally, rally you know, so against this the thursday protest. this yeah. thursday 5 p.m we're going to rally this thursday 5 p.m at the state capitol emua tmt will be there i think people on the other islands are also going to be doing i think big island there's some conversation going on because there's going to be some rain and people are like oh we're going to go we're going to not i think some people will go so everyone just be safe just be safe just be safe Okay, look, we're having a conversation about it. Don't you know, you're go crazy. Just be, even the even the protectors on the mountain. Okay, just be safe. Right? Just don't. You don't need to hang out there just because there's a hurricane. You're trying to be tough. Like just everyone, just keep going. I mean, I get the trust issue. I understand. You make your own calls, but just I think everyone's going to come out. They're going to share their manao, as we say, and they're going to like say like, okay, this is what I think. Just come tell your story, and we'll all just have this conversation. We like. I think I said this before. Max Holloway said it best, man. He's like. He didn't know exactly what was going on. He had this post about it. He didn't know what was going on. But all he wanted to say was, don't fight. Right? And that, I think, is the same thing. Don't fight. Just come out. Share what you think. You know, be respectful. Resp re tell everyone else to be respectful. But come out. Share it. So the next step is continue that message. Continue to tell your story. Tell it wherever you can tell it. Come to the rally, 5 p.m. Thursday at the state capitol. And then keep going online and you know, as much time as you've got. Send out messages of support to the governor, to Mayor Kim, to TMT, to the Moore Foundation, to Caltech, whoever is supporting this thing. Just tell them your story because the protesters are out there doing it. And that's, why, and that's all they're hearing. They're like, oh, my God, everybody in the whole world hates this thing. Don't be a wallflower. You can do something. There is no way that you can say you can't do anything. You can write an email or a letter or a hashtag. Samuel Wilder King, the second EMUA, T TMT, EMUA to you. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you. I just Aloha. want to add one other thought. You know, aloha means take care of each other. You say be safe. But, you know, arguably, at a higher level, um, we, ought, we all ought to be taking care of each other. Absolutely. We ought to be taking care of the whole community. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Aloha.